Hi folks, hope you're okay today, it's good to be with you. And we're having a, a short Bible study on John, uh, chapter, John chapter 11. John chapter 11. Uh, sorry, John chapter 11. A little bit tired, sorry. Uh, John chapter 20. There has been a series of Bible studies on John by me. And you can follow those Bible studies on the Gospel of John uh, by going back. So, just a short Bible study, and we'll just touch on a few points. <clears throat> so, John uh, chapter 20, and uh, we'll read, Father, we thank you for this day. We give you the prayers and the glory. And Father, we pray that as we study your word today, that you are blessed for your glory. And Lord, we pray that you are blessed in the name of Jesus and for your glory, Lord. Amen. The first day of the week cometh Mary Madeleine early when it was yet dark unto the sepulchre, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciples whom Jesus loved, and said unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth, another disciple came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulchre. And he stooping down, and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying. Ye went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter, following him, and went into the sepulchre, and seeing the linen clothes lying. And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciples which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. And as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre, weeping. As, as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre. And seeth two, dis two angels in white sitting, the one at, at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had laid him, had, had lain. And they said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou, whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me when thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said unto her, Mary, she turned herself and said unto him, Rabbani, which is to say, Master. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to thy brethren, and say unto them, I have ascended unto my Father, and your Father, and to my God, and your God. Mary Madeline came and told the disciples that she had been the, seen the Lord, and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, when the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst, and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so so said had shown unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad, and when they saw the Lord, then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them, and whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands and prints of the nails, and put my fingers into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were with him, with him, and Thomas with them. And then came Jesus, and the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Thus says he to Thomas, Reach 
hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thy thrust it into thy side. Be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. And many of the signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in the book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. I just want to say a few things about uh, John chapter 20. There's a lot that I could say. But I'm just going to make uh, three points here. Number one, this is about the resurrection. And just to say that the resurrection is, a cent is the central pillar of the Christian faith. The resurrection is rooted in a prophecy in Psalm 16 verse 9 and 11. You turn to Psalm 16. Psalm uh, 16, verse 9 and 11. It says 16, 9 and 11. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Neither wilt thou suffer thy Holy One to seek corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life in thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand therefore are pleasures evermore. So that is a prophecy of the resurrection of Jesus. If we turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. It says verse 1 to 4. Moreover brethren I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you which also you have received and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all, which I also received, and that Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scripture. So he said, I delivered unto you first of all, which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture. So the, the resurrection is central to the Christian faith. If Christ did not die, our faith is in vain. If, you turn to 1 Corinthians, if, if he did not rise, our faith is in vain. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 14. And if Christ be not risen, then he is our, our preach in vain, and your faith is also vain. Romans chapter 4 verse 14. Romans chapter 4 verse 14. Romans chapter 4, verse 14. For if they which are of the law... Is it 4? Romans chapter 4, verse 25. Romans 4, 25. Who was delivered for our offences and was raised again for our justification. Now, other scriptures that you can read and the centrality of the resurrection can be found in Acts chapter 1, verse 22. Acts chapter 2, verse 24 to 36. Acts chapter 3 verse 15, Acts chapter 4 verse 10, Acts chapter 5 verse 13, Acts chapter 10 verse 40, Acts chapter 13, 34. A.W. Pink, who in his commentary on the Gospel of John, which is an excellent commentary, says we cannot make too much of the death of Christ, but we can make too little of his resurrection. The church has not made much of the resurrection. We have Easter, of course. But when you look at the preaching of the gospel in the early church, they preached the death and the resurrection of Christ. Today, for the last 30 years, evangelicals have preached the cross. They've remembered the resurrection at Easter, and they believe in the resurrection. But we very rarely preach the death and resurrection of Jesus. And if we're going to be biblical theologians, if we're going to be biblical pastors and preachers, biblical uh, evangelists, we need to remember when we're preaching the cross, we must preach the resurrection. The resurrection and the cross go together. The resurrection is the glorification of Christ and all the benefits that we have in him. And, and it is an announcement that he is who he said he was, the Son of God. So the resurrection is central to the Christian faith. 
Are you preaching the resurrection in your ministry? Is the resurrection often mentioned in your ministry or not? Because the resurrection is central in Christian uh, evangelism, in preaching and teaching, and in Christian experience, the resurrection is a very important central doctrine. And we see that in John chapter 20. Secondly, the resurrection gives us hope. Here, Mary Madeleine, Thomas and the disciples are discouraged, they're broken, they, 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 they just wonder what's going on. But the resurrection makes all the difference. If you look at uh, the hope that it gives Mary Madeleine in John chapter 20 verse 11. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping, so she's got no hope. And as she wept, she stood down and stooped down and looked in the sepulchre. And seeing two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had laid. And they said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had said, she turned herself back, and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She supposed him to be the gardener, and said unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said unto her, Mary, she turned herself, and said, and said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, Master, Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren, and say unto him, I ascend unto my father, and your father to my God, and your God. He's expressing the family of God there. Verse 18, Mary Madeline came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Her, her, her brokenness and her emptiness turned to joy because Christ had risen. So whatever dark situation that we're in, if we lose a loved one, for example, there is a resurrection, there is hope, we have a hope. And, and, and let's remember that, that we do not live in despair today but we have a hope in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15 if you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 39 it says all flesh is not the same flesh but there is one kind of flesh of men another flesh of beasts another fishes and another of birds there are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars. For one star differs from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. And that whole chapter talks about Jesus died and rose again, and that we will die and rise again. We have a hope. If you turn to John chapter 11, uh, verse 33, 44, the Lord raised Lazarus from the dead and surely conquered death there. And he conquered death himself by dying and rising again. And if he conquered death, we're going to conquer death. We have a hope today. We don't have to be in despair. Whether we're on a hospital bed and we're dying, whether we've lost a loved one, we are going to die and rise again. And if they know the Lord, they are going to die and rise again. They have a hope too, a glorious hope. And it is not a false hope, my friends. So we've looked at the centrality of the gospel. We've looked at the hope, sorry, the centrality of the resurrection. Then we've looked at the hope of the resurrection. Then we look at the appearances of the resurrection. Here, the Lord appeared to his disciples, Mary Madeleine and Doubting Thomas. See Doubting Thomas later on in uh, John 20. Verse 27, then said he to Thomas, reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it unto my side, and be not faithless, but be believing. And there are a number of appearances that you can look at in your own time. John 20, verse 14, to Mary Madeline. Uh, Matthew 28, verse 9 to 10, the women. Uh, Peter in Luke 24, 34. Disciples on Emmaus Road, 20, Luke 24, 13. The uh, apostles in John 20 verse 19, more apostles in John 20, uh, 26, uh, fishing at Tiberias in John chapter 21, 
uh, the apostles and possible disciples in Matthew 28:16, 16, uh, appearance to 500 in 1 Corinthians 15, 7, appearance to James in 1 Corinthians 15, 7. So what do we make of these appearances? Well, I think a couple of things. They're evidences for the resurrection. The, the, it's very difficult to categorize these as illusions. Or someone having in, people having an illusion because normally illusions happen in one place and these are in different places with different people at different times. So it's hard to categorize it under uh, normal psychological studies today. So the evidences of the, the, the authenticity of the experience of the disciples that they rose again. That's why most scholars will grant you that they don't believe that the disciples had an illusion. Most scholars will grant you that the disciples themselves believe that Jesus died and rose again. Most scholars will grant you that. And that's what you see. But also that the Lord uh, spoke to different people in different times. You know, he spoke to Thomas who was doubting. He spoke to Peter who was discouraged and broken. Do you remember he said, feed my lambs? He made fish for them and, and said, eat. We see a Lord who's tender and in our brokenness minister to us where we're at. And wherever you're at today, whatever your problem is, God will minister to you where you are at. But there is resurrection life and that life can be poured into that problem that you're facing today. If you come under the banner of Jesus Christ today. And then we we'll look at Doubting Thomas. We looked at Doubting Thomas and again we'll look at verse 27. Uh, Thomas verse 27. John 20, 27. Then said he to Thomas, the resurrection and Thomas. We've looked at the resurrection appearances. Now we're looking at the resurrection and Thomas. So if we look at uh, John 20, verse 27. Then said he to Thomas, Reach under thy finger, behold my hand, and, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and, and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Do you know the amazing thing about this, when, when Thomas said, My Lord and my God, do you know what's amazing about this? He was so sceptical wasn't he? He was very, very sceptical. He just didn't believe, and he, he didn't believe the disciples when they said they seen him rise. And, and, and he said, I must put my hands in your side. I'm not going to believe. But guess what? The amazing thing is, and Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. Thomas, who was the most sceptical, gave the greatest testimony to the Godhood of Jesus. Isn't that amazing? He was the most sceptical, and yet he gives the most uh, affirmation to the deity of Christ. I think that's all lovely. Now if you was to read Thomas um, in John uh, chapter 11 verse 16 he, he was cynical again he, he, and depressive. He said let's go and he believed that you know he was going to get killed uh, with Jesus and in John 14 5 he, he kind of wondered where where he was going what was happening so he didn't kind of, kind of have it all together but yet eventually he saw the light and he saw that jesus was god what do we learn well we've got to be patient with people people are not going to see the light straight away very often and they're not going to have it all together but if you be patient with them they're going to be some of the greatest servants of the Lord. They're going to come through and be powerful servants for the Lord, but you've got to be patient with them. If it can happen to Thomas, who doubted then and became a great believer in, in, in the Lord, how much more with the person maybe you're trying to disciple, you're trying to encourage them and they don't seem to be moving forward, but persevere. Keep pointing them to Christ. Keep pointing them to him and keep praying about the seed and the Lord will bless the seed and it will be a blessing in their life. So that's just a few 
Thoughts on a Bible study on the resurrection. If you want to uh, study the resurrection in depth, uh, concerning the evidences of the resurrection, a good article, uh, can, articles can be found on Gary Habermas's website, uh, Mike Lacona's website, and um, there's some good lectures at Biola uh, University on the resurrection by one or two of their staff at Biola University on the resurrection. Superb lecture, one or two superb lectures there. Uh, Gary Habermas's PhD, if you want to do some scholarly reading, is an excellent uh, thing to read if you want to study the resurrection. Uh, from an academic point of view, but there are some very popular articles on his website that are very helpful in studying for evidences of the resurrection. And Mike Lacona's uh, website is very helpful on looking at uh, the historicity of the resurrection. I don't advocate some of their views. Uh, Mike Lacona, uh, I wonder where, what his view is about inerrancy or the inspiration of the Bible. I'm much more, I believe in the inspiration of the Bible uh, and the inerrancy. So I don't, uh, I don't advocate Lycona's weak view of scripture, but he makes some very helpful scholarly um, writing. He's made some scholarly writings and articles and lectures on the historicity of the Gospels. Um, is there any other sources? Just trying to think. Um, I think there's a good book by George Ladd on the resurrection. I believe in the resurrection series. I believe series and it's I believe in the resurrection. Uh, and I think that's by Ladd. And that's an excellent book. And looking at the evidences for the resurrection. It, it's a classic work and I would encourage you to, to study that book. Uh, it's a very good book. Also, uh, N.T. Wright wrote a book called uh, The Son of God, I think it is, or Resurrection of the Son of God. Uh, I don't agree with everything of N.T. Wright. I'll just look at my file. Uh, yeah, The Resurrection of the Son of God by N.T. Wright. That's another scholarly work if you wanted to read something. Um, so more devotional and, and, and popular is Josh McDowell's works. If you go on Josh McDowell's website, you can look at some popular works on uh, the resurrection there that are more simple and, and more edifying in that way. Uh, also, if you go to Legionnaire Ministries, you'll find, uh, and, and also listen to Ravi Zachariah on the resurrection, they're more devotional uh, as well as apologetic will, and will be a real blessing to you and our legionnaire ministries. Also, Sermon Index is an excellent resource and I'm sure you'll find a couple of sermons on the resurrection there. My favourite preachers, uh, young preachers, are uh, Matt Chandler and David Platt. I'm sure they'd have done some on the resurrection. And um, yeah, so thank you for listening. If you want to listen to a series, uh, on John 20, you go to Dr. Martin Lloyd John's Recording Trust, Dr. Martin Lloyd John's Recording Trust, and you'll find a series on the Gospel of John. You can go on John chapter 20 and go through there. If you want to re read a commentary on the Gospel of John, uh, A.W. Pink's Gospel of John is superb. You can get it free, PDF. Okay, those are some re resources. Uh, my favourite commentary on the Gospel of John is J.C. Ryle. You can download that for free, PDF. And Leon Morris, uh, you'd have to buy that, it's quite expensive. Uh, is a brilliant commentary on the Gospel of John. Uh, but J.C. Ryle is excellent, uh, spiritually edifying, and scholarly, and simple. Uh, and you can get that free, uh, PDF. Just download, type in Gospel of John. Uh, JC Ryle PDF and you can get that for free and you can read that every day as a devotional and it's got study notes as well excellent 
Okay, I'm going to close in prayer. I hope those um, resources have been helpful. Don't forget my website, jasonbirdspreacher.com. Jasonbirdspreacher.com. Don't forget to pray for us as we go out and evangelize. And I hope this little study edifies you and just encourages you to, to get draw closer to the Lord. If it's done that, I hope it's been a blessing. All right, God bless you, and let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love and your blessings, Lord. And Father, we thank you that we're living in the light of your gospel today, in the light of your joy, in the light of your blessings. And we give you the praise. We give you the glory and the honor. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. And so, Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your grace. And, Father, we give you the praise. We give you the glory and the honor today. Father, I pray for all those who have listened to this Bible study that you bless them and may they know your love, may they know your grace. In Jesus' name, for your glory. Amen. 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 Thank you for listening and God bless you.